Okay. Now I'd like to t- tie in a little bit to how this ties into Titania because Bob is the founder of Titania and the process at which he used to come up with this is, is actually a scientific process relating back to the scientific method, experimentation, and him working with another scientist, John David Garcia, right. to actually evolve this a non-hierarchical system of, of organi- organizing human beings into groups. Mm-hmm. I guess if we're going to do that discussion, I should start by pointing out that my life has always been driven by curiosity, and that means I'm looking for new information. But because I grew up in a scientific household with a father who was a lifelong famous scientist, <clears throat> because of that, my curiosity was always geared towards finding new information that's true. So I had to learn scientific method, and I knew the basics of scientific method by the time I was 10. So I grew up in that family and was very curious. The first my parents noticed this was when I disassembled their alarm clock with a hammer and a big screwdriver. (laughs) I wanted to know how it worked. Unfortunately, I was unable to reassemble it. And you didn't have the right tools to take it apart either. No, but I didn't know that. and took it apart anyway. Anyway, my mother was dismayed. My father thought it was hilarious and really enjoyed seeing it because he understood that what it meant about me was here's someone who is intensely curious and is willing to take significant risks in order to find the truth. Without recounting all of my personal history, I arrived at a point in my life around 1971 when I realized that much of what I believed was false. Because I was interested in finding true information and distinguishing true information from false information, I began to study my own belief. I actually took a stack of index cards and wrote down things that I believed. One after another after another, I had a big stack of them. And then I sorted them into categories. Well, this is about politics. This is about religion. This is about mythology. This is about science and so forth. And I then began reviewing them to see, could I find the evidence objectively to sustain all these beliefs? And what I learned was that many of my beliefs were sheer baloney. They were things that were taught to me by other people who believed them for the most part, but they were false. Just because someone else believes it, just because your father believes it, your mother believes it, your teacher believes it, your employer believes it, doesn't mean it's true. And so I became disillusioned. I gave up many of my illusions in that process. And although it was painful, it's always painful to give up your illusion. Although it was painful, it was also freeing. It opened my mind to many, many things to which my mind had been closed by those false beliefs. So that was a a turning point in my life. And then, after spending some years becoming an accomplished psychotherapist, I began to recognize that many of the things that we see in the news, much of what we see going on in politics, much of the interactions between businesses and banks and governments and so forth, and religious leaders, Many of these things that I saw began to fall into pattern. And I said, there must be some truths hidden in here that I need to ferret out if I want to understand what's going on in the world around me. So I was, again, questioning, questioning, questioning. And although I didn't sit down and make a list of index cards, I did begin making notes. And it was during that period that I met John David. That was John David Garcia? Yes. And you met him in Oregon? In Oregon, on his ranch, in 1984. Okay. Give or take a year. So, that's, see, that's the margin of error. <laughs> give, uh-huh. give or take a year. He invited me to participate in some experiments in creativity, which I did, enjoyed, and uh, we got to be friends, and remain friends until his death in 2001. John David was one of the most brilliant people I've ever met, and one of the distingui- distinguishing things about him was he knew a lot about everything. He was very well-rounded in his education. He knew knew enough math and physics to solve equations in quantum mechanics. He knew enough about biochemistry to be able to explain the biochemical process of evolution in a very simple, understandable way. He knew enough about comparative religion and philosophy and politics to be able to understand and explain pretty clearly how the world works in terms of these things interacting with each other. Well, during the time that I knew him, I became a kind of uh, colleague of his, or collaborator of his, 
And I used my background in systems analysis to answer the questions about that I had about what are the major influences in making the world the way it is, and especially I wanted to know what would have to happen or change for humanity to thrive. Because I saw humanity was not thriving. Still not. It's getting worse. Yes. As a matter of fact, uh, I would predict, based on my analysis, <laughs> uh, it's a scientific prediction, and the experiment is going to happen whether I like it or not. It's going on right now, right? It's going on right now. I predict that unless humanity changes some really central things about how we do stuff, we're going to make ourselves extinct in the not-too-distant future. What's the not-too-distant future? Well, somewhere between 10 months and 10 years, I would guess. A couple of orders of magnitude. I know it's happening. I know if we don't make certain kinds of changes, it will happen. I can't predict exactly when, but that's the path we're on as a species. And that scares me. I don't want that for my species, or for me. So I began looking for answers to the question. And of course, to know what has to happen to make a good change, you got to know what is happening. So I applied my systems analysis methodologies looking at the primary institutions that run the world. And it turns out that the three primary institutions that run the world, to whom we turn for solutions to societal problems, are business, especially big business, and of that group especially banks, they all start with a B, big banking business. Second group is organized religion, O-R, organized religion, and government, G. And I said, ah, I watched Star Trek, it's the Borg! <laughs> and like the Borg of Star Trek, this group of people to whom we look for solutions are actually the source of the problem that we have. Now, you might ask, why aren't I saying the problems? We've got all kinds of problems. We've got war, we've got hunger, we've got poverty, we've got all these problems. No. We have one problem. It's that the Borg keeps us in the matrix. And from that, all these other symptoms are derived. Once you understand the Borg and the fact that it's a parasite and the fact that it has no conscience and doesn't care how many millions of people it kills, once you understand that, everything goes click. Suddenly the world around you makes total sense. It's no longer hard to understand what's happening. It's easy to recognize when some minions of the Borg are distracting you with entertainment, with sports, with television, with the media generally. And it's not hard to figure out that they're lying to you. And it's the lies that comprise the matrix. On my website, titaniums.org, you will find a list of a dozen, I used to call them the uh, pernicious fallacies, now I call them the comforting lies. These are lies intentionally perpetuated by some groups of people within the Borg and then spread ever further and further by just people who are ignorant of the fact that they're lies. You hear them from your parents, you hear them from your teachers, you hear them from, your, from the pulpit, whatever kind of pulpit you go to, if any. Uh, these lies are spread and the people telling these lies think they're the truth. And because you believe in those people, you believe the lies, you're in the matrix. And the world will never change for the better as long as there aren't a substantial number of people who've gotten out of the matrix. The website is all about getting out of the matrix, understanding what's really happening, and then doing something about it. Because no matter what you understand, no matter how much you know, it's not going to help change the world until you do something. Can we vote? Can we vote ourselves free, Bob? <laughs> no. It doesn't matter who you put in office. The way the Borg has structured 
the system, the government, all the, all the stuff we call politics, the elections, the campaigns, all the news about the elections and the campaigns, all this stuff is theater. It is what I call pageantry. It's just like what happened in the old feudal days, when the feudal lord, one day a year, maybe twice a year, he opens the gates of the castle, and all of the serfs come running in, and they get to eat and drink and enjoy the good life. They get entertainment. They get to participate in sports. They win rewards and prizes. Oh boy, our Lord loves us. And they also have a place to recruit the, the best people for their, their little inside club, too, right? They have that going on, too. But the main point of that kind of pageantry is to keep the serfs in their place. To, let them, to make them believe that the person who's lording it over them cares about them, when in fact they don't. It's a PR campaign. It is a, it is a profound manipulation in the way of PR campaigns, yes. That's what politics is. So if I had everyone in the room stand up and say, okay, I'm going to ask you some questions to see if you're in the matrix. Okay, did you vote in the last election? Oh, you did? Sit down. You're in the matrix. Did you vote in the last presidential election? You did? Sit down. You're still in the matrix. <laughs> Do you think that if Ron Paul became president, the world would change for the better? And the system would change? You do? Sit down, you're still in the matrix. Okay? Do you think that if, if as Ed Griffin says, Ed Griffin, you know, he's, he's a great staunch liberty lover, he has an organization called Freedom Force. And the whole point of it is, let's all get into positions of power. Let us infiltrate the system and change it from within. Are you with that? Are you with Freedom Force? Sit down, you're still in the matrix. It won't work. The system's designed not to allow it to work. And or I you'll have, get corrupted. Oh, yeah. It, you'll, there are a number of things that can happen to you. If you love liberty and you become a politician, there are a number of things that can happen to you. Either you'll get corrupted and you'll become just like the rest of them, or you will be marginalized so you can have no effect whatsoever, or you will get blackmailed. They'll find a weakness and blackmail you. You will be manipulated in some harsh way. Mm -hmm. Blackmail might be one. Or, if worst comes to worst, you'll get kicked out. Yeah, and look at Elliot Spitzer. And if they can't kick you out nicely, one day you'll be disappeared. Or maybe you'll be like Saddam. You'll have an accident. Yeah. So my point is... Government is like a robot designed not to be changed, except for the benefit of the few people who own the robot. And it's like that with government. It's owned by some folks you hardly ever hear about. You can call it a conspiracy theory. That's okay. Anytime two people talk together about, or think together about doing something, they're conspiring. So anytime something happens that two or more people were involved in, there was a conspiracy. Big deal. Doesn't make it false. And as for theory, a theory is nothing but an explanation of the observable facts. And so when you try to explain what's going on in the world, and you look for a theory that fits the facts, if you're out of the matrix, you won't like what you find. But Whatever that idea is that you have that makes sense of the world, it's a theory. It involves conspiracies. So what? Okay? When people make that a pejorative term, when conspiracy theory becomes a put-down, then the media is doing a number on your head. They're trying to belittle, sideline, marginalize the real thinkers who really understand what's going on. You want to be one of those that gets marginalized? Get out of the matrix. <laughs> you want to be one of those people who marginalizes others and belittles them? Join the government. But just remember that to be effective in government, you have to be obedient to the robot. Because if you're not, you don't stand a chance.